can you think what kind of restraints the clamp will provide? Now we've restrained the component from moving in the V-block, but what about the V-block itself? It's only prevented from moving downwards. Well, here's one way of preventing both from moving, a magnetic V-block. As it is at the moment, it's no different to a non-magnetic one. Switch on and the magnetic forces provide the additional restraints necessary to prevent both the component and the block from moving in all three directions. Can we use these magnetic forces to restrain any material in the block? What about brass, a plastics material, or aluminium? Let's try brass. Of course, it's not a magnetic material. A V-block is often used to hold a circular component when drilling. The block and work can normally be restrained by clamping them to the machine table. Packing is needed under the other end of the clamp. It should be high enough to keep the clamp horizontal. Well, almost. Can you work out here in which directions the component is positively restrained? On a lathe, circular work can be restrained in several different ways. In this chuck, positive restraint is provided in two directions. In the third direction, along the axis of the machine, restraint is frictional. Here we're using a chuck with different jaws. This time, the jaw shape provides a positive stop behind the work. On a lathe, work can also be held between centres. Before mounting the work, each end must be centre drilled. To drive the work round, a driving dog is fitted to the headstock end of the component. This will locate in the driving plate. The center hole at the other end is greased. Can you think why only one end? Here the work is positively restrained in all three directions. When carrying out work on a component, it's necessary to ensure that it's supported in the right places. Do you think there's anything wrong with the way this rod is restrained? Well, can you see what's happening? The downward force of the drill is causing the work to deflect. This is because the V-blocks are too far apart. A component should always be supported as near as possible to the point where the force is applied. In this case, as near the drilling point as possible. Now, there's no observable deflection at the middle, but what's happening to the ends of the rod? Do you think they need supporting? Cutting forces can cause work to deflect on a lathe. 
This long bar is being restrained in the chuck at one end. What happens if we want to take a cut at the other end? The noise you can hear is called chatter. As the tool is fed in, cutting forces cause the work to deflect and vibrate. The result is a poor surface finish to the work. Here's one method of overcoming this. By using a dead centre in the tailstock, we can support the free end of the work. sounds better. The work is no longer deflecting, so the cutting action is much smoother. Another method of providing additional support on a lathe is to use a fixed steady. This is bolted to the bed of the lathe and has three jaws, each adjustable. The jaws are tipped with a low friction material. Each one is adjusted until it just supports the work without deflecting it. You'd use a method like this if you were going to drill into the end. It's not only cutting forces that can cause work to distort. This component is supposed to be circular. Now, if we'd wished, we could have restrained the component from the inside using the same chuck, but with different jaws. This time, less clamping force is used and the component remains circular. How would you restrain this in a vice? This time, the clamping forces have broken the component. It's cast iron. All that was necessary to prevent it from breaking was a small packing piece. Now here's something for you to think about. This is a casting which needs a lot of machining. It's a component for a drilling machine. Let's look at the finished job to see what needs doing. First, we've got to bore these two holes, making sure their axes are at 90 degrees to one another. Then this slot must be cut through. And finally, these two lugs have to be drilled and spot faced. Can you work out how you'd restrain one of these castings for each of those operations. <laughs> 